Hi, I'm Heather, and this is my sister, Tiamo. We're going to talk about how you can stay connected when you're in Malawi. The best ways for you to stay in touch, get data and phone calls. Mm -hmm. Tia, what would you suggest as one method? Well, one of the most efficient ways to be most connected is probably to get a local SIM. We have two major networks, um, Airtel and TNM. Um, and you can get a SIM, put it in your phone and for most cases if the phones are SIMs are removable. Um, and with that, you're able to make phone calls, use data, use things like WhatsApp and be quite connected. Data has recently become a lot more affordable and you can actually get a really good amount for a really good amount of money. So just to give you an example, um, I paid 24,000 kwacha, which is the equivalent of about 10 British pounds or maybe $13. Mm -hmm. And I got a 65 gigabit package and I've been using that to hotspot my whole, whole family. I was working from home for a week and I expect 65 gigabytes to last you the whole month. Yeah. That's yeah. possible. Yeah. I've been watching YouTube liberally, Netflix, everything. So data is cheap and actually making calls locally is also cheap. I bought for 2000 kwacha, which is just under 10 pounds, uh, British pounds and probably about just over $10 US. Um, 150 minutes of call call minutes, um, and that that's plenty. I was busy doing a lot of local jobs, and 150 minutes lasted me a week. So in hindsight, I might have bought more. But if you're just going to be making a regular level of calls, 150 minutes may well be enough because you can do talk time as well with your gigabytes of data on WhatsApp. Yeah, so you can be talking on WhatsApp in a call without having to have the minutes. So that's another good way. Exactly. Um, something I've been doing more recently for a variety of reasons is just using my T-Mobile SIM um, instead of changing to a local SIM. Now, this is something that's doable, but it's not the best way. Um, you can be connected. The connection will be a little spotty. I do know T-Mobile is able to do um, in various countries, they use local networks to kind of keep you connected, but it will be a little bit spotty and uh, it will be a little slow. So that's something you need to remember. Every once in a while, I might be in the middle of something and then it'll just disconnect. So unless you're going to just use that when you're out and about, it will work for the most part. Um, and if you're in the home, you can use Wi-Fi. That might be the best way to go. Um, I will say, though, that they do also offer an opportunity to pay for minutes because with that plan, it will be 25 cents per minute. You don't want to do that. But they will offer you several different plans that go from, I believe it's $5 to $25 to $50, different levels of minutes and data. So that's an additional thing that you can do if you want to buy up and don't want to change your SIM. The reason that's helpful is if you, for like me, I get a lot of um, calls and things like that notifications of things that are still happening um, in the U.S. And I like to have my U.S. SIM to be able to stay connected with those things. Um, unless you have two phones, then you can use one SIM in one and a, a, the... Or a dual one. SIM. Dual SIM is a very good idea. I don't know how many phones have that. You know what? In the U.K. and the U.S., they don't seem to do dual SIM cards. But in Asia, a lot of phones have a dual SIM. So you can have two SIM cards in the same phone. Um, my latest phone, which I bought uh, an iPhone in the U.K., has eSIM facilities and a regular SIM. Mm. So I'm going to make my Malawian number an eSIM mm. and then my UK number because my network doesn't do eSIM. Mm -hmm. I'll have that as a regular SIM card. Yeah. So I get dual SIM by having eSIM and a regular SIM. Yeah, that can be helpful. Yeah. For UK networks, it's definitely not cheaper for me to have my English SIM card in there and my phone is open because I bought it outright. So I just always just buy a local SIM. Yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Um, all hotels that you'll stay in will have free Wi-Fi. Um, a few Airbnbs will. Our Airbnb, Airbnb, which we have in Lilongwe, has free Wi-Fi for you, but some places might not. So if this is important to you and you don't want to get a local SIM for connectivity, double check that they're going to have Wi-Fi at least within a day or two of you getting there. So that's about it. It's easy to stay connected in Malawi because they have masts everywhere. I actually get better connectivity on 4G in Malawi than I do in the UK, which is incredible. Yeah. And, you know, depending on what it is, the networks do have the Wi-Fi's, but you can also get like Skyband or Afrinet or recently um, the, the other one that Starlink. Starlink. Yeah. Um, people are able to get Starlink, which I've heard is excellent. So you can get kind of subscriptions to some of those yeah. um, that are not as um, temporary or portable as the Airtel and TNM ones, but they're more Wi-Fi that you'd have in a home. Um, yeah. So those are good options to look into for good home Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's if you're coming not as a tourist, but to stay for a lot, little while longer. Maybe you're working here. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to look at one of those options. We'll put a little bit more info in the description. 
I hope you enjoyed this video on staying connected in Malawi.